I had like, I counted it up, 27 people that sent their credit card or debit card number and wanted to pay for my repairs. It doesn't get any sweeter than that. And I had some photo place out in Los Angeles want to know if they can sell some of my abandoned building photos and like give me a commission. Honestly, though, I'm really not into it. And like with the t-shirt thing, I think most t-shirts are like junk, ugly. Even on popular channels where they got like millions of things, you see, buy a t-shirt. It looks like just the biggest, see the planes are taking off into the, uh, is this guy climbing or landing? Should be climbing. Yeah, they're taking off uh, into the southwest. Oh, thank you, Tom. Hey, LA, how you doing? But uh, on the t-shirt thing, uh, they can just get them from uh, Cat out in Arizona. You know, I'm not, uh, I don't want to, I'm not trying to like, pro I think you get a better t-shirt when you get them right from the person. I'm not trying to like get any money out of this stuff. And like I said, the YouTube stuff is paying my expenses now which is a dream world to me. It's actually not costing any me to be here anymore like it used to, which is just like, this is like way more than I ever expected. Sure, you keep sending those crazy uh, emails and getting involved with that kook and flint and I'm going to block you. I don't want to do that. I think you're basically a decent person. But as I explained to you in the email you sent me, she's a lunatic. I've said that about a bunch of people. It was a standing joke meant for Catherine 313. And yes, I did say it. An overweight, middle-aged lady trying to get laid. And she turned it around like she was your good friend, letting you know how I talk about you behind your back was, was absolute fucking bullshit. And you decided to run with it. So you got a choice here, either to just let's put that behind us and quit writing with, to this crazy coop that's posting it on her stupid mentally ill website about ruining me, or maybe you should just go over there from now on. No, but uh, I think you're communicating with her, and uh, if you, she wouldn't know what she knows if you hadn't said something along the way. So, look, I don't want to, like, rehash this bullshit, and I explained to you where I was coming from, and uh, it'd be like someone telling a dirty joke and then me going to someone and saying, hey, look, I don't, uh, I don't want you to tell anybody now but this is what Sherry said about you, like we're some good friends, and, and you took it and you ran with it like it was fact and that I really meant it. Let me tell you, and I want you to think about this. Do you think if I would have really felt that way, we would have talked as long as we did and that I would have had any interest at all in meeting you for dinner out in Ann Arbor? And I'll be 100% honest with you, what was the cherry on the top when I decided to get rid of you? And that is because, and I'm not complaining, you would text me all the time, and you would say the sky is blue, the moon is yellow, the sun's coming up, how you doing, how's your day, which was fine. I didn't mind it at all. But what ticked me off is there's a video out there where Gerald asked me to take the video down. And I'm going to tell everybody right now, that whole thing was worked out right then and there. And in people that don't know the backstory on that, in their minds, they're thinking the video should be down and it's not. That's not what was agreed upon, not at all. So rather than just send me one more text and say, hey, why isn't that video down? You told them you'd take it down, you didn't do that. You went and posted it on another channel and wanted to know why I didn't take it down. And that was the final straw. So just so you know, it's full disclosure and everybody knows what's what, I thought right then, you know, I don't want to get into this bullshit. You're running with a, a flippant comment that was a joke. And we had a good time when we went out to dinner. And now you're going around posting things on other channels that you just as could have easily asked me. So that's why. Yeah, that's why. Sherry was a moderator for a long time and did a good job. 
but she decided and it was the same thing and, and i've said this before too it's the same thing with jesse you know if jesse Jesse's trying to have a channel. I get it. You got to get lucky to get a channel built up. I know I've been. And and rather than Jesse just be up front with me and said, "Hey, look, I fucked up," I warned her about Ollie. And Jesse finally got it broken her ass, off in her ass by Ollie. But this this is what happened. If Jesse would have Jesse was communicating with this bitch, who she knew fully was doing everything she could to try and get my channel canceled. Jesse knew this. But since Ollie never said anything bad about Jesse, she didn't have a problem with it. Well, you know what? That's not how it works with me. If someone was bad mouth and Melota Canvas or May or anybody else, they're out of here. You don't need to say anything about me. You're talking a lot of shit about someone that I have a good relationship. You're gone. She didn't do that. But what really ticked me off is being the lunatic, troublemaking psycho that Ollie is. She copied all Jesse's emails, and what Jesse didn't know is that Ollie had already sent me the communication she'd had with Jesse. So here's where Jesse put the cherry on the top and why I decided to not have anything to do with her anymore. Not that I don't think she's, in a lot of ways, a good person, and not that I don't wish the best for her channel, but she got a hold of me and said, hey, look, I wanted to be straight with you, and I wanted to tell you what I talked about with Ollie. Well, the reason she did that is because she knew Ollie was a wacko, psycho nut, and she probably thought, God, what if she sends Tom my emails? Well, she didn't know it, but I already read the emails. So by the time Jesse got a hold of me under the ruse of being honest and upfront, I'd already realized she was communicating with this kook that had tried to hurt me in every way possible, and I cut Jesse off. I blocked her, and I took her away as a moderator, and honestly, if I never talk to Jesse again to the day I die, it'd be too soon. It's unrelated to a working girl, drug addiction, a bad child life. It's just a character flaw that I've learned over life is something that I don't want to babysit. Jesse's not a 14-year-old. She guessed and she guessed wrong. Not my problem. Yep. So that's what happened. Not my problem. And I, I will admit that I'm probably, uh, I don't know, a hard ass about that. It's just, it's, it's my personality. When I can catch someone's trying to stick it to me, or they're not being straight, particularly someone that I've done nothing but try to help, it just absolutely kills any interest in me wanting to have any kind of relationship with them at all. No, I don't. I don't think so. But you know, and, and, and you're you 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 are lying. You said that you never called anybody and asked them if I said that to them, and that's an absolute lie, Sherry. That is ab an absolutely lie. You're saying that you never called a third party and said, "Did Tom ever say to you, you know, he wanted to screw me in the parking lot, or I was an overweight middle-aged broad trying to get laid?" You're lying if you say that you never asked anybody that because you did. So that's like two cherries on the top now, not just one, it just like never ends. It's like, why do I want to get, why do I want to have a relationship with you? For what? Hey Cassie. Yeah, it's just like, it's, it's but, but I, I, I don't get it, man. It's like, you know, there's no need for this. Yeah. No, that's the real Sherry, because uh, she sent me an email. Yeah, that's a good question. What did it? What did happen to Kim? You know, I was thinking that today. I was going to call her today, and I figured maybe Sherry called her. Said, "Hey, you know, this guy's a big pervert. All he does is talk about screwing the women he takes out to dinner. It's a joke." Oh, she's in no way is she in intensive care. Oh, here comes the cop. Come here, Daisy. Come here, honey. Come here. Hey, look. Come here, Daisy. Come here. Stay there. Stay, honey. Stay, honey. Good girl, honey. This goddamn cop has to come in here for another night in a row. 
God damn it. Yeah, that's him. He's driving down the... I think he's driving down the uh, trail. Well, oh, this is my luck. Yeah, if it is the same cop, that's good. That's right, I'm on the right side. He's going to go down the first one. Yeah, that's him. I got the... Yeah, that's a cop. <laughs> Hope it's not a state cop. No, he's looking for cars right now. It's Frank Nitty. What's good in the city? Where brother get gritty? I don't take no pity. Daddy long stroke. You ain't gonna be able to take it. Daddy long stroke. You can't fade it, Daddy Long Stroke. And you ain't gonna be able to deal with that. I'm out.